Hi guys, uh, welcome to my video on how to set up and program the Big Tree Tech SKR Mini E3 version 3 to run Marlin 2.1 X on the ANET A8. So you're going to want to download uh, Bugfix 2.1, you're going to need Visual Studio Code, you're going to need uh, the configurations from Marlin. You're also going to need a micro SD card. Um, size doesn't really matter. Um, it, it's only a few like a few hundred kilobyte file, so pretty much any card will work. I mean, I'd just get like a new one, so you have a dedicated one for this. If you have a spare one laying around, as long as it's current enough, um, you you should be fine on that, no problem. Um. My printer and the, the firmware I'll link in the description. I have a pre-compiled one that I made so you don't have to go through all these steps. If you want to just download that for the ANET, uh, you can. And then skip ahead to the end of the video to see how to flash it and then rewire it. You're also going to need to do this whole process besides the, the Marlin software and the Visual Studio Code. You're going to need to get new connectors. Um, the ANET end stops and a few other things, they use a, a three pin connector with two wires going into it. The SKR uses a two pin connector for that. So you're gonna to need to rewire your connectors. It's super easy to do though. It'll take you like maybe five minutes to do them all. I did all mine in like a couple minutes. Um, a box of those connectors is a few bucks too. It's not even that bad. I think I got my board and connector set on Amazon it was like 50 bucks total um, and that comes with the TMC 2209 drivers already pre-installed on the board so that's good um, so yeah make sure you have your connectors you have the software linked and then another thing the, the factory ANET board it, it's not gonna work with the SKR mini right out of the jump you're going to need to do some modifications to it. I'll touch more on that later in the video, but if you're planning on what you're needing to buy and you want to use a, like an easy screen, you don't want to do any hardware modifications or more coding, you can the the firmware is set up for the stock uh Big Tree Tech like Ender screen. So if you want to just buy one of those, that you can just plug in and play. The ANET screen is a little bit more complicated. You need to repin things, jump some wires. Uh, I'll, I'll leave a link to a video on how to do that. I personally didn't do that. I just run Octoprint, so I don't really need a screen. It, it just doesn't benefit me. Um, but yeah, let's get right into the software end of things. So now for the software, um, first thing you need, Marlin 2.1 bug fix. Uh, go to the GitHub, it's in the description. Just click code, download zip, it'll download right there, turn on Chrome. Then you're going to need configurations, uh, the pre-made configurations. Also linked, um, make sure you're on the correct version that you're doing this for. So we're doing bug fix 2.1. So we're going to select that, download zip, and then last you're going to need uh, Visual Studio Code, and that's so you can edit and compile your firmware. I already have this installed, so I'll install it again. I'll drag these out here. And then if you're on, I have WinRAR. You just need a zip extractor. Just go ahead and extract those. There's Marlin. Here's configurations. Um, okay, and then what you're going to want to do next is open File Explorer. And this is just to make uh, it a little easier on you. Go to your C disk, go to, or create a new folder. 
name it firmware. I'm not going to do it because I have one right here already done. But just make that folder. And then in there, you're going to drag your bug fix. I'm going to rename these because I already have. Uh, I already have folders with the same name, so it's going to screw it up. But I'm going to drag your. So this folder has all the extracted files from the bug fix that we downloaded and extracted. So we're going to put that in here. You could also just extract it to this if you want. I, I don't know. It doesn't really make a difference to me. I don't care about 10 seconds. Uh, so once this is in here, you're going to want to open... Actually, open up this one. Go to config and then examples. So there's a couple ways you can do this. You can either get the defaults for the ANET board, which are in here. You'd copy these and then go back to your firmware, go to your folder that you just made, and then go to the Marlin, and then you would paste these in. You can do it that way. You have a little bit more uh, to tweak, per se. So what I did when I made my firmware was, so the SKR Mini E3 is a board for the Ender 3. So you can actually go to Creality, Ender 3, and they have a pre-made uh, example configuration for that board on that printer. So copy these, close out of that, go into your Marlin, now paste these in. Uh, when it asks about replacing, skipping, always replace it because you want your configuration in there, not the default Marlin. Now we're going to close this, close that, uh, we can close this. Uh, open up Visual Studio Code. You're going to go to Open Folder, and then since we put our folder in an easy to find location, it's also going to have a short, <coughs> short file path because sometimes it'll bug out if it's too long. Like say you had it buried in, I don't know, like 10 different subfolders, it, it might be too much of a path for it to handle, so we don't want to do that. We just want to open up folder, and then whatever you name it. I name mine 2.1x. You can name it Marlin. You can name it, you can name it whatever you want. It doesn't matter. So just open up that folder, and then in here, let me just close these out. Um, actually, before you open up that folder, you're going to want to go to extensions. You're going to search for Auto Build Marlin. You're going to install that. You're going to install Platform IO IDE. And you want to install C, C extension. Uh, just, just look these up right here. You'll see they come up. It's not not tricky. And then auto build. Auto build Marlin, that one. So once you have all those installed, you might have to restart um, Visual Studio. So just close it out. You can quit in Task Manager or whatever. And then make sure all these are I guess, working. It'll, it'll tell you down here. It'll be like downloading. Um, so once all those are done, you're going to go back to Explorer, find Marlin, and then find configuration.h. So a few things we got to change. Uh, hit uh, Control F to find. You're going to look for Alright, so you're going to want to Search default access steps per unit, which is line 1226. Um, so on the ender, they are actually all 80, 80, 493. So we're going to open up Google. We're going to look up ANET A8 default 
access steps per unit. So we can see a net is 100, 100, 400, 100. So we change this. Since we are not using the ender, um, we're also going to look up the default max feed, or feed rate. You can also, to kind of simplify things, instead of Googling it all, what I did was I opened another tab of Studio Code. Um, I have two monitors, so I put mine on my other screen. You can also just have them like this. And on this side, you're going to open... You're gonna you're gonna go to wherever you downloaded your configurations. So in my case, it's on my desktop. Configurations bug fix 2.1x config. Go to examples a net a config. So now this is on the right side the default a net stuff. So it's pretty much what you're gonna need to to change from the Ender 3 since we're doing this obviously for an A net. If you're on an Ender 3, just take the default Ender 3 and then either use that or modify whatever you need to in it. Um, so we're going to look up default max feed rate. So for the A net, we're going to want to change this one to 400. Eight fifty default max acceleration. It's pretty much you're gonna go. Line for line and just edit what you need to. Now you don't have to change everything. Um, if you don't change the acceleration, you're just gonna be a little bit slower. But I mean that's up to you. If you want yours to accelerate faster, go for it. Um, yes, yeah, so you can see default acceleration. We'll change you to 400, 1000, 1000. So that's the same. Um, let's see. Another one you're going to need to change is the Build. It's either the build area. What is it called? <laughs> Give me one second. Uh, another thing. Uh, I left these the same. I don't know. If this really makes a huge difference, um, you can change them. Leaving them as they are worked fine for me. Uh, when I changed them, when I did mine, it threw a couple of errors because you have to change a bunch of other things. So you should be fine there. Um, go to your temps, which 610, 611. You see all these are the same except for bed max temp. We're going to lower that. To 130. Now for your sensors. Oh, uh, you can leave these. Actually, this is the part you gotta look at. So to find temp sensor, change that to 5, and then bed 5.
Next, what you're going to want to do is you're going to find uh, the bed size parameters. So we're going to change this X to 220 if you're on the stock build plate, which I'm assuming most people are. Um, X minimum position. We can leave those. Um, you can also change them. It'll ch it'll do this for you when you home it. So I'll just leave them. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, Z max position is going to be 240, and that's pretty much all you have to you have to change a few other things. Um, since we're on the SKR Mini. Make sure your stepper motors, stepper drivers are the TMC 2209s because those are the onboard uh, built in drivers. And from the A nets, I think it's the A, yeah, A4988. Um, make sure you have your drivers set correctly, it'll make your prints much higher quality and It'll get rid of that noise when your printer's running, when like the axes are moving. Um, it's really annoying. It's like that whining pitch sound. So if you change it to this, it'll actually make it a lot quieter. So that's something we need to do. And then come to the invert you're gonna want to set all these to false because you don't yours aren't inverted um, you have a geared extruder as long as you're on the stock extruder the stock normal one that comes with the anet you're gonna want this to not inverted and then for invert X direction and invert Y direction, you're going to want to make, you're going to flip those. So make X and Y, oh fuck, make those false. And then for the Z, make that true. Um, and one quick thing if your X axis if you have it set up like this with your motor, uh, that's a video. If you have your motor with the back of the motor facing the board, you're going to want to invert your X. Or, I guess, leave it inverted. So if your X motor looks like this, Keep that inverted. If you mounted it the other way, make that false. Like not like that, like that. Uh, otherwise you're gonna be going the wrong direction. But mine is like this. Uh, some people have them flipped to either fit electronics or they'll flip it to this method to have things like a Z fine tuner put on here or a chain guide. Um, so yeah, if yours is like that, like this, you're going to want it to set to true. That's just a quick side note. Um, if you download my, my firmware build, it'll be set to this. Um, so keep that in mind. And then... I think that's everything. Um, so now you're going to want to go to your extent. Here, I'll close this one. You're going to go to extensions. After you've changed everything you need to, go to your extensions. Auto build Marlin. So when you open this, when you open a Visual Studio, it should just pop open. We're going to save this quickly. Or you can hit Control Alt B. 
and then it'll fail. Of course it will, because Okay, I just had to reset something. Um, so yeah, go to your auto build Marlin, and then for environments, you're going to click the STM 32G0B1, da da da, build, and then if it throws an error, we will go from there. Oh, yeah, I know it's going to throw an error. So we have to set our serial ports. Well, give this a second. I, I forgot about that. Um, open configuration advanced. Search serial. Okay, so I, I went and fixed all the uh, serial issues. You're just going to want to find what it's telling you to do and make sure they're defined. Um, and then lastly, another thing I like to have on is in stops. I know it's end stops always. Uh, end stops always on default. You're just going to uncomment this. So yours will probably look like that. Um, uncomment that. And then uh, if you don't have this on, you if you move your printer head, and you hit your end stop, but you're not homing, it will just crash into it. So by turning that on, uh, the end stops always, always work. And then go to auto build and build it. And we should be error free now. But pretty much, if you're building this yourself, um, you're gonna wanna just change anything that is specific to an Ender 3 compared to a a net a so any any of the differences you just got to change um, like speeds um, because if you don't change those and then clear it in your EEPROM you it's not going to print at the scale you're telling it to which is something I ran into with mine um, you're, you're going to say print I don't know 10 10 millimeters and it'll only print 8 if you're on the Ender 3's settings. Uh, so you're going to want to make sure that you change that. Or otherwise everything's just going to be off. And it won't be proportionately off. It'll be off by um, whatever values are in there already. It'll, it'll just screw up all your prints. For it to build. If you close tabs um, that you aren't using, like say you have, I don't know, a game open, 
or some demanding application, I would just close that while you're doing this. It'll maybe make it go slightly faster. Um, it'll still take time, but it's usually like under a minute to build, so it's not too bad. Okay, and you can see uh, we had a success. So that means our software is built. So now it's time to test it. We're going to go to where we put our firmware. So in my case, it'll be C firmware, um, Marlin. Then you're going to go to the .pio folder, build. Um, it's going to be whatever environment you built it in, and then Big Tree Tech for this specific board. Scroll down to where you see firmware.bin. Um, you can either copy it or drag it. It doesn't really matter. Let me just find that. It's probably on the other desktop. Yeah, it is right here. So here's our firmware. It's a... Uh, oh, we don't want to open this. It's only a few kilobytes. Um, you're going to need a micro SD card. So all you do is you just, uh, I don't have a card in my computer right now or one handy or I do this, but say this is your SD card. It, you don't have to do anything special. You just need to have an empty SD card, take your firmware, put it in there, um, and then eject it. And then now it's time to go to the printer. All right, now we're down here with the printer. Um, one thing I forgot to mention when we were doing our coding is uh, disregard my screwed up cable. I gotta fix that. If you want to use the default screen that comes on the ANET and not buy um, like a big tree tech one or a compatible one, you're gonna need to do quite a few wiring modifications and software changes to make that work. Um, you're gonna need to step down the voltage so you don't blow that board apart and blow this board apart because that wouldn't be fun. So I'll, I'll leave a link to a video that'll explain that pretty well. Um, and then another thing, you're gonna wanna buy one of these kits. It's just a, a JST XH connectors. Um, you're gonna need the two wires because the ANET board, all the stops come as a three wire setup or a three pin, two wire setup. But the SKR Mini uses a two wire, two pin setup. So all you gotta do is just pop the old connectors off or cut them, whatever you want, and then put in these connectors. So it's only a two pin. As you can see on the ANET board, all those are three pins. So that won't work, you gotta change that. But other than that, it's pretty much no other physical modifications. Um, so then once once you're ready to flash your firmware, once you've done all the wiring changes, if you're gonna be using that screen, you've changed the firmware, or the code for the firmware to actually use that screen, and done the necessarily uh, hardware modifications to it, you're gonna start with your printer off. I just killed the power. You're gonna take the SD card in this case, this is mine, that you put the firmware on that I just told you about. F you're gonna put that file on this card and then on your board, pop that in. With that, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna put mine in just cause I don't need to reflash it. I've already flashed it. Um, with that in, simply turn it on and then give it like 10 seconds maybe and it should be flashed and ready to go. Um, and then you can plug in all your things, your motors and whatnot. And then if you're using a Raspberry Pi, which I have right here, go ahead and plug that in. Um, yeah, and then you're pretty much good to go. I'll grab a computer and I'll show you everything working. All right, so we're back. I went and grabbed my laptop. Um, it's about to die, so we gotta go fast. Um, go to your Octoprint, 
and it should just connect right away. You'll see your temperatures pop in, and then if we go to control, I have my camera on, you'll see that everything works, or it should work. If your motor goes the wrong way for either one, um, simply just go back to your configuration file, um, change the direction, so either inverted or non-inverted, and then build it again. Um, if we home, you'll see it's all going. Hear how quiet that is? There's like no noise from these, which is really nice. Uh, if you have people, I guess that like are with you, I have roommates, housemates, family, whatever. It, it, it does get really annoying. I have mine in a basement, so it's not as bad, but you could still hear it throughout like parts of the house and it was just really annoying to hear that buzzing sound coming from the motors, but the TMC 2209 drivers really do a good job of making it quiet. So yeah, now your printer is ready to go. Um, I guess I'll show you guys it printing. Uh, let me just, I'll preheat it and then come back. All right, so we're all heated up. I'm printing out a one of those little calibration cubes, you know, they're like the 20 by 20 millimeter cubes with the XYZ on them. Um, I'd print one of those out as your first thing just to make sure all your settings are correct. Um, that'll tell you if your motor adjustments are out or anything. Um, if you're having it's like skipped layers or shifted layers, you can tell easily from that. So here we go. Prime, and now we're printing on the SKR. Uh, I gotta level my bed, it's kind of coming out crappy, but you get the idea. Um, with these motors, you can actually run, oh, zoom out. you can run the machine a little bit faster since you have like a finer control over your motors, uh, there's less error in them so that's something you can do but that's pretty much all it's not too much work to make that make that board work on this printer um it is very similar to an ender so that does help but then again you can really use any board on any printer as long as you have the correct firmware so I just, I went with this board because I'd gone through two of the stock ANET boards. Um, some of you might know there is a capacitor in them, I believe C43, which controls your bed temperature sensor. Oh, fan screwing up, there we go. Um, that controls your bed temperature sensor, and those are known to kind of just burn themselves out. And stock ANET boards are like 80 bucks and for a printer that i bought for right around 100 a couple years ago i think that's just awful um they shouldn't cost that much when you can buy a better board for i think this one was about 40 bucks 45 bucks on amazon um and it's a much better board it prints better it's quieter like you can't even hear this thing printing right now the only noise is the fan so I think it's just a much better solution. Um, it's also, you don't need a bootloader or anything. You don't have to do to flash Marlin. Um, you have your thermal runaway protection built into Marlin. So that's good. These boards, um, at least the 1.7, which is the last one I had. These don't have thermal runaway protection. That is a big, big hazard. Because I've had times where my hot end heater or my hot end uh, temperature sensor have come out and I don't really want to start a fire. Maybe some of you guys do. If you want to start a fire, I guess maybe you have a cold house or something. You can run the stock board without thermal runaway, but you probably want it. Um, no one wants to burn their printer down and their house. That'd be an unfortunate accident um, but yeah you can see it's printing pretty good and this is just off that firmware um, 
you can see back what I was saying with the motor. My motor, it goes that way. So if yours is mounted on the other side, just make sure you flip that. Um, you can either flip your motor to this setup if you're gonna just run my firmware that I have in the description, or if you're building your own firmware, or you have one off like the internet, if you find one, I couldn't find any, which is why I built mine. Um, and it's going the wrong way. The easiest thing is to just flip that manual, like physically hardware, instead of coding it out if you're using a pre-built firmware, since you can't. It, it's like a recipe for a pie firmware. You can, you can put all the ingredients in and then bake it, but once you bake it and you're eating it, you can't turn it back into ingredients. You could say, oh, I think this has this, that, and this. Like, say, a pumpkin pie obviously would have pumpkin and whatnot, but you really can't go backwards. Once you've built the firmware, unless you have that folder that you built it from, you really can't undo, like, a build. So once you're in the firmware, that bin file, you can't really go back to unbuilt, just like that Marlin folder we, we had before. Um, so, yeah, if you're doing that, I would just recommend flipping that. But other than that, everything's pretty much plug and play. All of your end stops should just work automatically. Um, your direction should be fine. As long as you change your default steps, which I showed you, um, you're going to print out in pretty good accuracy. I mean, it's going to be as good as it can be. Unless you do some crazy stuff and get new new uh, motors and drivers and whatnot, but off just the stock setup and then this board, it's it's very good. I mean, I'm printing right now at I want to say 75 millimeters a second, which for an ANET is pretty good. I mean, this I printed. It's a uh, new um, a tensioner. You can see that that's, it's not bad. Like, I, I gotta clean up some of the, the string and whatnot, but it's not bad. I'm happy with that. You can see the seam. Uh, you can change that in your slicer settings, but the actual build quality, I would say is definitely a step up from the stock boards. Same with this. This is a new Raspberry Pi case. It looks pretty good. It's printing better than better than the old board could. And that's really just due to those drivers. I really think that's a game changer for the ANET. Um, I'll come back when this is done and I'll show you the cube.